FM 7-22, PRT, does it still stink and exist? If it does, what do we need to know about it? All that's coming up. Hey team, welcome back to Channel Man. As always, I'm super stoked to see you. So uh, coming at you, uh, we're, coming, we're talking about some FM 7-22. Uh, and it's actually not FM 7-22 anymore. The new FM 7-22 is Holistic Health and Fitness, right? Uh, and I want to say it's an ATP... 7-22 point bravo or whatever it is. I'll make sure in the description and then down uh, for the actual title that it's all squared away. So if you're looking for the actual title of it, because I can't think of it right now, and I don't have a Google at my fingertips, uh, just look look there. But what we're talking about is physical readiness training, PRT. When FM 7-22 Holistic Health and Fitness came out, it was kind of like a, a, a huge shift, right? Like, what what just happened to, to PT? Why aren't we, as the Army, telling folks how to PT anymore? And truth be told, it's that we are, it's just in a new uh, reference. <laughs> so you still need to know this. And why, look, man, some boards out there on the MOY are going to list uh, 7-22 as physical uh, readiness training, and some more going to listen to as uh, holistic health and fitness. Some dudes are going to ask you about holistic health and fitness, about physical readiness training. And so we're going to ask uh, a few, we're going to run through a few standard board questions. This is from my packet um, of questions. I don't have this on my MOI anymore uh, for the battalion, but, you know, whatever. Here we go. Uh, so what does PRT stand for? Physical readiness training, right? Uh, what does, and I'm, we're going to continue, I'm going to ask you a few other standard questions, and we're going to have some situational questions, and then follow up at the end, and then uh, we're going to get out of here. So uh, let's do this some more. What does PRT prepare soldiers and units for? So PRT uh, prepares soldiers for the physical challenges of fulfilling the mission in the face of the wide range of threats and complex environmental uh, operations with emerging technologies. So what did I just say? It prepares soldiers for war. <laughs> Hello. Um, and you could probably use that for anything that is questioned along a similar way. What does X prepare soldiers for? And leaders to do. It's the answer is probably always. It prepares soldiers, leaders, and units to be prepared for a wide range of, of operational environments throughout the United States to be able to sustain and maintain those operations. Right. What is physical readiness? Physical readiness is the ability to meet the physical demands of any combat or duty position, right? Boom. What are the seven principles of training that PRT links to? So the seven principles of training come from uh, training. And this question could be asked in a number of different ways. What are the seven different principles of training? List as many, seven, list as many principles of training as you can. So the very first one, and most of them, after you kind of get it, uh, make make sense, right? So the very first principle of training is that commanders and other leaders are responsible for training. Similarly, if you ever get asked a question about who's responsible for anything, the answer is always the commander, right? The next one is NCOs train individuals, crews and teams, right? So commanders are responsible and NCOs are the ones who are training. The next one, of course, you train as you'll fight. You train to sustain, train a standard, and then train to sustain. Conduct multi echelon and concurrent training, and then of course train to develop agile leaders. And that rounds off your top seven. Too schmoozy, right? If you get stuck in there and you're like, you know, commanders are responsible. Uh, NCOs train, train a standard, train a fight. And that's all I can recall at this time, first sergeant, right? That'd be less wrong than anything else. What are the critical components of a physical conditioning? 
The critical components of physical conditioning is strength, endurance, and mobility, otherwise known as mobility. It's Italian. Uh, next up is what are the three training phases of PRT? And so that's toughening, or initial toughening and sustaining. So on that, when, when does each one kind of come into play? So initial con, uh, conditioning phase begins before a service member actually even goes off to basic combat training. Right? So when you're still in MEPS and you're still talking to your recruiter, maybe do a PT session with them. You're in the initial uh, conditioning phase. Throughout basic, throughout AIT, and all the way until you sign into your very first duty station, you're in that initial conditioning phase. From then on, you go into toughening and sustaining. And those, those are going to bounce back and forth between your operational environment. So if you are, like, as soon as you get to your unit, man, you're in the toughening phase. And you're going to be in that for a while. And then at some point in time, uh, without, it's no magic number. There's no hard timeline. You're now in the sustaining phase. But let's say you go on a deployment and you're gone for a long period of time. Or, you know, just coming back off of uh, all the restrictions from COVID-19. You know, a lot of units are back in that toughening phase because we're getting back into doing PT as an organization. So now we're back in that toughening phase, right? What are the four active component PRT programs? So that is a unit individual reconditioning and special reconditioning. And then last, uh, we have our situational questions. So situational question number one is you've been tasked with serving as the NCOIC uh, for uh, an ACFT. Explain how you will prepare to resource and execute this test, right? So you're going to serve as a grader, right? You're going to serve as an as a, as a NCOIC, whatever it is. How are you going to prepare for this evaluation? Same question could be asked a million different ways for anything that NCOs do. Remember, because that second principle of training is that we, that we as NCOs, we conduct this training. So we need to identify the time and the place, right? The uniform, double check the uh, training calendar because it should be there, right? But just make sure if we're going to do something that's away from our location where we always do PT, we know that where we do PT probably right by our, our company headquarters, is, is kind of sacred ground, right? Like nobody else comes and does PT here. But if we want to do an ACFT, and maybe we're going to go to a stadium or maybe we're going to go to a, an open field, we need to probably do a reconnaissance of that area prior to. And we need to understand what the, the battle rhythm of this place is. Do I need to reserve the land? If I reserve the land, do I need to identify somebody to be there earlier than I am to occupy it? If I can't reserve the land, what time do I need to be there that's reasonable to get things set up so that other units, they know that when they start flocking in, that this is my lane and not theirs? And so after we have all of, the, uh, all of the land taken care of, we need to identify everybody who's going to be a grader. We need to conduct, you know... Uh, uh, just thinking about our our, our TLPs and, and and other training type things, we need to we need to evaluate our trainers and make sure that they're good to go. Hey man, I know that Top said that they're good. I know the Army said that they're good, but I want to make sure that they're good. So that, do they know how to grade? Because we all need to be on the same page. So we conduct some rehearsals. We identify all of our equipment. We get everything set up. And have it set up 30 minutes prior to go time so that when 15 minutes prior and people start showing up, everything's already ready to go. I got my CLS bags on site. Speaking of CLS, uh, I have my draw already squared away and it's signed off by the commander. We're ready to go. 
Got all my scorecards. I got some extra scorecards. I got extra pens and pencils. We're ready to get this thing kicked off. Got my instructions printed off. Everything's ready to go. And afterwards, we're going to get everything uh, signed off and into DTMS. Next up, you're a scorer, and notice that another NCO is counting things that are obviously not to standard. How do you respond? Right? You see another grader, and because we didn't do uh, some standardized training prior to uh, to certify the trainer, we see them. That is not... That is not standard. That is not standard. Oh my gosh, what, what, what are you doing? Right? How do you respond? Well, what you don't want to do is go, unless it's, unless it's crazy, um, you're going to screw up this service member taking that uh, evaluation if you, if you totally stop it. And that's something that, that dudes like me would commonly do, right? And just go up and yell and stop and totally annihilate the whole thing. So we need to make a ethical decision based off of what we see at the time. Is this something that needs to be stopped time now? Because it's either too lenient or it's too hard. Or is this something that I can address afterwards? But either way, man, it needs to be addressed. And I need to make sure the NCOIC knows, maybe even the me of you knows, and then keep moving on. A soldier presents a temporary profile prior to conducting an ACFT. What are your actions? I mean, you know, you get these dudes all the time, right? Got an APFT, ACFT coming up. Got a field problem coming up. And they go get themselves a temporary profile. It says, I can't do this, Sergeant. What are you going to do about it? What are your actions? So check this out. Um, again, this is another one where I think a lot of us can, can become overzealous in particular areas. And this is certainly one of them. Because it would be easy for us to judge an individual because they have a profile. We talk about this stuff all the time, right? Like uh, we, we we're over it, right? We're over the 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 madness of looking at folks, you know, seeking behavioral health, uh, and yet the stigma, right? And we, we, there's still a stigma of going to to medical. So what you need to do is not play into the stigma of of assuming that somebody is malingering or just trying to get out of going to the field or whatever the case is. And just acknowledge, Roger, hey, I got you. According to your temporary profile, you cannot take a record physical fitness examination, combat fitness test, whatever, right? Oh, but it does say you can do these events, so I'll tell you what, you're going to do these events during the evaluation. The whole thing's not the standard, so it's not a big deal. May even have you do those uh, twice, maybe even three times for the ones that you can do, right? <laughs> so, I mean, that would not be un inappropriate, right? It would not be inappropriate to say, oh, hey, I got you. We're going to get you put into our uh, special reconditioning program so that you can uh, ensure that you're not hurting your body more than what it needs to be. And then immediately when that profile expires, we'll get you evaluated. It's no big deal. And let it go at that. Now what I'm doing here is I'm playing the long game. I'm playing the, dude, if I see you, you know, and you're not supposed to be running at all, but I see you on a basketball court, throwing a football, I got you. That's straight up malingering. I, I will counsel you for that. You're saying, you know, the long game of if somebody gets down that road, all it takes are some 4856s to give to the me for you. And then, uh, you know, the Army will take care of the rest. You can do a combination, you know. 
Hey, uh, but I think uh, I think that's going to do it, fellas. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, man. Consider sharing this out with a battle buddy. If you think that they could get some value added. And if you did, make sure you leave some comments down below where we can keep this conversation rolling. Continue to master our craft. Appreciate every single one of you guys, man. You stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.